before here in San Francisco. There was an all-day symposium sponsored by the American Association for the Advancement of Science. AIDS critics were Philip Johnson, Harvey Bialy, Celia Farber, Charles Thomas, Peter Duisberg, Peter Plumley, Carrie Mullis, Harry Rubin, Ryan Ellison, and Charles Geschechter. The defenders of AIDS orthodoxy were badly trounced. In May 1994, an alternative AIDS conference was held in Bologna, Italy. A two-part article by the prominent mathematician Serge Lang, HIV and AIDS, Questions of Scientific and Journalistic Responsibility, was published in Yale, Yale Scientific. In 1995, a young German virologist, Stefan Lanka, argued that not only has HIV never been properly isolated, but it might not even exist. Later, Lanka would argue that retroviruses themselves might not even exist, but rather be proteins shed by human cells under stress. This provoked a dispute among AIDS dissidents, uh, which is still going on. Ian Young's book, The Stonewall Experiment, was published in 1995. It debunked the orthodox view of AIDS and movingly portrayed uh, the betrayal of gay liberation by the commercial sex industry and by hateful religionists. In April 1995, an alternative AIDS conference was held in Buenos Aires, Argentina, organized by Ricardo Lechaud. In 1996, David Rasnick, an expert on protease inhibitors, wrote, Inhibitors of HIV protease useless against AIDS. Paul Philpott and Christine Johnson debunked the use of PCR counts in their article, Viral Load of Crap. <laughs> Carrie Mullis supported them by saying quantitative PCR is an oxymoron. In 1996, a new AIDS distant militancy emerged with San Francisco ACT UP which, unlike other ACT-UPs, was opposed to the AIDS industry and its lies. At the International AIDS Conference in Vancouver, hundreds of angry AIDS activists, led by ACT-UP San Francisco, marched behind a banner that read, AIDS drugs kill, ban toxic AZT, sue Glaxo. Later, San Francisco ACT-UP members crashed an AZT panel and drenched Margaret Fischel and Paul Fulberding with fake blood, charging them with murder for promoting a poison which had been approved through fraudulent research. The leaders of ACT UP, David Pasquarelli and Michael Belfontaine, were courageous and perhaps reckless, and they paid with their lives for this militancy. I was very fond of David and can hardly believe that I'm in San Francisco now and won't see him. 1996 saw the publication of three important books, Peter Duisberg's Inventing the AIDS Virus, Stephen Epstein's Impure Science, and Neville Hodgkinson's AIDS, The Failure of Contemporary Science. Hodgkinson's fine book was withdrawn and destroyed by the publisher, and copies are hard to find but he will soon be making it available electronically. In 1997, John Lauritsen and then Ian Young edited The AIDS Cult, Essays on the Gay Health Crisis. The eight contributors, Casper Schmidt, George Hazelhurst, Michael Elner, Andrew Court, Cass Mann, Michael Callan, John Lauritsen, and Ian Young, explored the ways that beliefs, group interests, and social forces were conspiring to gay, make gay men sick. In 1998, Joan Shenton told the Meditel story and gave an excellent summary of AIDS controversies in her book, Positively False, exposing the myths around HIV and AIDS. The 1998 International AIDS Conference was held in Geneva, and for the first time, AIDS critics were on the official program thanks to the organizing of Michael Baumgartner. In the panel on testing, the Perth group debunked the AIDS, I'm sorry, the HIV antibody test, and Etienne de Harvin, 
showed how retroviruses ought to be isolated and photographed. About 60 dissidents were present and about 18 of us had press passes. Uh, in 1999, Christine Majore wrote a large pamphlet, What If Everything You Thought You Knew About AIDS Was Wrong? In time, this would be expanded and become the most popular of our alternative AIDS publications. She founded the group Alive and Well, which together with proliferating heal groups provided hope and sound advice to those who had been diagnosed HIV positive. In 2004, Charles Ortleb, publisher of the New York Native, made a film, The Last Lovers on Earth. This brilliant satirical film was released in DVD form in 2006, and it is currently available. Also in 2006, Celia Farber's book, Serious Adverse Events, An Uncensored History of AIDS. In 2007, two important books were published, Henry Bowers, The Origin, Persistence, and Failings of HIV AIDS Theory, and Rebecca Colshaw's Science Sold Out, Does HIV Really Cause AIDS? Of great importance in the struggle for truth about AIDS are the websites, which have provided an end run around censorship. Some of the main ones in no particular order, Virus Smith, Duisburg, AIDS Wiki, Alberta Reappraising AIDS Society, Samaria, or the Memory Hole, AIDS Information BBS, Perth Group, Rethinking AIDS, Alive and Well, Roberto Giraldo, Heal, especially Toronto, New York, and London, Henry Bauer, David Rasnick, and the Immunity Resource Foundations. Publications that were at least sometimes friendly to our, our ideas include Continuum, Rethinking AIDS, Reappraising AIDS, New York Native, SPIN, Heal Bulletin, Raman Site, Biotechnology, Sengers, Positively Healthy, PWA Coalition Newsletter, Townsend Letter for Physicians, Magnus, and Genetica. Finally, the alternative AIDS groups, and I'm afraid this will be very incomplete, the Group for the Scientific Reappraisal of the HIV AIDS Hypothesis, formed in 1991, HEAL, ACT UP San Francisco, Positively Healthy, Alive and Well, Continuum, Project AIDS International, Cure Now, PWA Coalition, sometimes friendly, uh, and Alternative Health, uh, and the Foundation for Research of Natural Therapies. Okay, my conclusions. Uh, I think it's important as we get into more stratified areas of AIDS discourse not to forget what we know all, already. Science is cumulative, a point made by Aristotle. We build on what we already know. Um, AIDS is not a coherent disease entity. It has never been defined rationally and the surveillance definition has changed radically over time. Whatever AIDS is, it is not infectious. The phase two ACT trials, the basis for FDA approval in 1987, were fraudulent. All of the subsequent AIDS drugs rode in on the coattails of ACT. All of the AIDS tests are worthless. ELISA, Western blot, CD4 counts, P24 antigen, and PCR counts. We are not dealing with honorable opponents. They lie, cheat, and steal. And oh yes, they murder. They are currently saying that we, AIDS critics, are responsible for the deaths of 330,000 Africans. Why? Because we prevented them from getting the AZT that they needed. And finally, the, the optimistic note, people with bogus HIV positive diagnoses can thrive, provided they observe sensible health practices and keep drugs out of their body. That's all.